Hi, I'm disability lawyer David Brannon. In this video, I'm going to discuss the common reasons that your short-term disability claim could be denied. After watching, you'll be able to know these reasons and pinpoint the one that applies to you. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button. We love it when people hit that like button. And also leave us some comments and subscribe so that you'll get these videos. We're sending them out several times a week. So let's look at some of the common reasons that an insurance company or claim administrator will deny your short-term disability claim. Now, I do want to say at the beginning that these are reasons that they're going to tell you. Sometimes they will believe these reasons. Other times they're just going to say it because they're, they have to give a reason. Okay. So, but these are what, these are the reasons that they're going to tell you whether they completely believe it or not. These are the reasons you're going to get. So the first reason you're going to get is that they don't believe your symptoms are serious enough for a short-term disability leave. It could be just because you do not have enough documentation. Maybe your symptoms are serious enough, but they're not well documented. And so in that situation, you just need to get more information to the insurance company about the severity of your symptoms. Maybe it's only you talking about the symptoms and they need more information confirming from the doctor that this is a serious symptoms and impairments that are keeping you off of work. So the second reason is related to the one I just talked about, but this one is that the medical records do not show a serious disability. So it's really very similar, but they might word it that way. So what they're saying is that they are looking at your medical information that was sent in and nothing in here indicates that there's a serious thing going on. Now, it doesn't mean that there is not a serious thing going on. It just means that your medical records do not reflect that. So again, it's very similar to the first reason I gave you. You have to go back, get your medical team to give more information to make sure that the seriousness of your situation is reflected in the medical records, usually by like the doctor describing your symptoms, the type of treatment that's recommended and that kind of thing. So the next reason is related to your treatment. They will look at the treatment you're getting and, and the reason they'll give you is that your treatment does not indicate a serious disability. So there's this idea that if you have a serious problem, you're gonna be getting serious treatment. You're gonna be taking serious medications. You're gonna be seeing specialist doctors. So if they see a very lukewarm a treatment approach or very little treatment at all, other than just going to your family doctor, very likely they're gonna just say stamp no and say that your treatment does not reflect a serious condition. Keep in mind that depending on your diagnosis, there are accepted standards of practice for the medical community and the insurance companies are gonna have doctors reviewing. That's the easiest way for them to deny your claim. If it appears that your doctor is being too conservative or not really moving ahead with what would be the recommended treatment. So you leave work because of depression, anxiety, your doctor just wants to, you to decompress at home for a little bit because maybe it was a stressful work environment or whatever. But if you're just home and not really trying out medication, not going to a psychologist, there's not some active treatment going on, they're gonna say that there's just, your situation is not serious enough because you're not getting serious treatment. Obviously the, the remedy here is to make sure that your doctor is prescribing the right treatment and maybe they are. But if they're not, it's important to make sure that you're getting the most uh, best practices so that your treatment will indicate the seriousness of your condition. This next one is one of my uh, most hated ones, but they may say something along the lines of, you're not off work because of a disability, you're off work because of workplace drama or something to that effect. It's this idea that you're really not sick or you have a problem, you just have a terrible work environment and you just wanna get out of there. Who wouldn't wanna get out of a bad work environment? If they're going that route, you have to be extremely careful uh, sometimes you, people do have bad work environments and they can be extremely stressful. Just because you're off work due to work stress does not mean you don't qualify for short-term disability. However, it does mean that you need to bring up these workplace issues with your employer to make sure they're being worked on as it can cause problems with the, some insurance companies if they feel like that really all that would need to happen here is the stressful work environment would resolve and you would be fine. They view that as almost like you not having a medical condition. They see it as completely determined by the workplace. So the solution here is not for you to take medication or do treatment, it's just for the work environment to be fixed. That That's overly simplistic, but that is how some insurance companies and claim administrators will view it. Again, that's highly oversimplified, but it's important that you understand this because it will, you know, the natural inclination for people is to super complain about their workforce, some people more than others, uh, their workplace. And if, if pushed and urged, people will go on and on about how terrible this and terrible that. So you have to be very cautious about how much you, you don't wanna overstate how bad your work environment is because they can use that against you. All right, this next reason, you, it's, they usually won't come out and say it, but this is often a reason 
that will be implied. You just want to be off work to look after your children or because you are pregnant and you don't want to work, okay? They, they often don't come out and say that anymore, but that will be implied. So if something happens in your family and your children, you, you know, you have to be home, that you, you've lost whoever was looking after your kids if they're not in school and, and you're home, you're, you're off on a sick leave because of the stress related to the whole situation and you're now looking after the kids at home or there's a pregnancy in your family and, and you know, uh, you want to take off a pregnancy leave or a, or a paternity leave. These kind of, this creates a situation where they're like, the, you know, they're looking at it in the worst possible light in some situations and they're wondering, oh, well, this person just wants to be off because they no longer have childcare and they want to be home. So they're creating a disability to be home. It gets very messy here because often there's a family crisis that can cause a mental breakdown and people go off and yes, kids are around. And so it becomes very dicey. So if you get denied for this reason, I would just encourage you to reach out to a lawyer to get some advice because these situations are difficult to navigate and how you things are presented and the things you do are very important. So you don't get pigeonholed. It's just being some person who wants to be off work because you don't have anyone to look after your kids. It's kind of ludicrous, but we see this all the time. Now, the last reason it, again, these all kind of fit together, but another reason they will give is that your doctor is not supporting that you have a disability. Now, this is a terrible one if this is your case. There's a couple ways this can go. Sometimes doctors can be actively against you. Basically, they, they put in writing, I think this person can work there. I think they're exaggerating their disability. Yes, I've seen doctors write that about their patients. Or it can be that they're, it's the doctors not saying anything. So they're just giving the you know very milk toast, not really saying anything, just giving some general information. And from that, the insurance company will say, well, what they're not saying speaks volumes because if they supported you, they would say it. And then you have doctors who really are for you, who are coming right out and saying, they don't feel you can work. They feel these symptoms are too serious. So if you have a doctor who's really kind of on the fence in what they're saying or is actively working against you, the insurance company will seize on that to deny the claim. Now there's all kinds of ways to fix this. This is one of the easiest things to fix actually, because a lot of doctors do have good intentions some of them are just mistaken about what's required for the sick leave. Sometimes there's issues between you and your doctor that if we do a claim review and look at your situation, we can identify that and give you some strategies how to repair that relationship. Sometimes you do have to take some ownership of that. But again, that's something we can counsel you on and how to fix that relationship so that the doctor is confident that they can support your disability claim and not go against their own beliefs that they don't want to, you know, the, most doctors don't want to support people on a disability claim they don't think deserve it or who they don't think are sick enough. So a lot of that is just education, sometimes with you, repairing the relationship with the doctor, and sometimes just educating the doctor on what's required and the, the, proving to them that you have done all you can do to get better. So that's it. Those are some of the most common reasons for denial. If you think you got another reason, put it down in the comments. And certainly, I'm sure I'm gonna think of some more. I'll go and put those down in the comments too. Don't forget to like the video and also subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time.